to share with you my cyber horror story. It was about 10 years ago, I was sitting in my office, and my intercom rang, and my receptionist, Maria, said she had a phone call that was on hold, and I said, yeah, please tell me who it is, and she said it was uh, a member of the FBI. I said, well, put them on, and of course, and uh, she patched them through, and this gentleman said, hey, listen, I'm an agent from the FBI. He gave me his name. He said, I'd like to come meet with you tomorrow. Now, when the FBI calls, it's a good, good thing to say, yes, sir, or yes, ma'am, if they request a meeting. So I said, of course, come on by. And he made an appointment to come by the next day at 10 a.m. So we came in the next morning, and I had my partners, co-founders, Kevin, Aaron, and Tammy with me. And we all sat around the table in my office. This agent couldn't have been anything but nicer. What he said to us was this. He said, listen, back in the late 90s and early 2000s, containers of our old electronics from the United States, when they left our shores, would be sold to the highest bidder, even though that wasn't good recycling practices, but back then it was sold to the highest bidder. And mostly the people buying containers of old electronics coming off the shores of the United States back in 98, 99, 2000, 2001, 2, 3, and 4, was, these were being purchased by people who wanted to mine the electronics for their precious metals and other valuable metals, gold, silver, copper. Now, of course, the people that were mining for these materials didn't have the right tools, all creating environmental hazards, and also, in many cases, human rights violations because children were co-opted into this process. And he walked us through that history. And we agreed. We had known about this. That's why we started our company, to responsibly recycle electronics domestically here in the United States on our shores. He said there had been a turn, though. Post-2008 and 2009, what the FBI and Department of Homeland Security started understanding much better were the people now buying these old containers of electronics when they were shipped by other companies other than ERI weren't that interested in the metals anymore. And we were a little confused. Remember, this is still 2007, 8, 9 that he was telling us this turn happened in. And this meeting happened in 2012 or 13. But he said cybersecurity was becoming a much bigger item. And yeah, these were the early days. And he said the folks that were buying the old electronics off of our shores to quote unquote recycle them, but of course they weren't doing anything of the such, they were buying them to mine the data, not the copper or silver or gold, the new gold, the new copper, the new silver, the new oil was now the data that was contained in the old electronics. Now, if these electronics came out of Washington or Virginia, of course, in many cases, they came from government of the United States and they were full of secrets and information that people who are adverse to our homeland security here in the United States would be very interested in. The same thing goes for corporations. We immediately started our cybersecurity quest to make sure that all the data that's contained in old electronics would be destroyed responsibly here in the United States of America. All of our facilities got NAID certified. We got SOC 2 certified. And it's become a big part of our business. And many of our clients that seek us out or seek out some of our legitimate, incredible, responsible c competitors don't come really for the environmental benefits. They come for the cybersecurity peace of mind that they get by using 
legitimate and responsible recyclers here that exist domestically in North America. This is a horror story that's true and has only grown, and the problem still exists today. So please take care of your old electronics when they come to their end of life and have them responsibly recycled.